Welcome back to a special edition of our core cutting Q&A. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, I'm answering your core cutting related questions live on YouTube here. If you want to join us, ask a question about core cutting, maybe help answer a question or get the most out of your core cutting experience, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and join us. Not only for that, but for all kinds of other videos. But some questions need a little bit more in-depth um, answer that I can give. When I'm during the live chat, chat's flying by, I'm trying to answer as many questions as I can, and that doesn't allow me to dive in depth on a particular topic. So today I'm gonna to do that. One of the more common questions I get, sometimes seriously, sometimes in a dismissive kind of, ah, cable will just be cheaper in the long run than core cutting. And I firmly believe that's not true. Core cutting is cheaper now, and it will be cheaper in the future. And yes, I'm including internet, and I'll cover that in a minute. But I really wanna dive into it and give it a fair, deep answer here that I think this topic deserves that I can't really do during the weekly Q&A. So let's kind of get into this. Will cable companies find a way to make core cutting more expensive than cable just to get everybody back? And I firmly believe no. Let's first cover the TV side and then I'll get into the internet because I can hear your comments already. Don't worry, I'll, I'll answer your, your questions. Now, core cutting is well known for being cheaper. It's one of the main reasons people do it. There's a real fear though that down the road, they'll find a way to raise it. And we're already getting this argument once again as cable companies try to play games with the numbers. Uh, one of the biggest tactics is taking uh, much of the cost of cable and putting it into fees and equipment rentals and the like so they can advertise cheap plans. They could say, hey, 100 channels, all this kind of stuff for $29.99, $39.99. Look, we're cheaper than core cutting. But there's always like an asterisk that says up along the lines of fees and taxes not included. And what are these fees and taxes? Well, there's tons of fees and taxes on cable that are not included with core cutting. For example, regional sports fees, broadcast TV fee, free TV over there, they charge you extra for it. HD technology fee, device rentals, DVR rental. Um, now that most cable networks are going digital or are rolling out across the country, you have to have a box for each TV out there. Um, so you have to have uh, a device for each TV you uh, want with it. That can really add up. Here's one Comcast um, customer's fee. So they advertise, let's just say $39.99 basic package here. This customer has a bundle with internet and TV and his fees added up over $80. So he has additional TV services. So all the other fees, uh, regional broadcast fees, um, regional sports fees, excuse me, and more, $18.91. Additional internet services for internet side, $13. A lot of that is the modem rental, which you can bypass. I'll cover that in a minute. Uh, additional products, service, and equipment fees. So the DVR, all the adapters. If you got three TVs, you can easily add up to over 20 bucks a month with some of these plans nowadays. If you get a cable box plus some adapters. Um, taxes and surcharges. Um, other charges and credits, $13. Tax surcharges, $8. All add up over 80 bucks of fees mostly not included. Now you're gonna say, look, there is some taxes with streaming. There's a sales tax in some states. Well, there's also sales tax on cable. So yeah, percentage-wise, sales tax on a um, cable bill is more than sales tax on a cheaper streaming service. It's a percentage, it's even on both sides. Um, but what we don't have is all this. When you buy a Roku, you own a Roku. There's not a fee for the Roku on top of that. Maybe a fee for the services, but you're with cable, you're not only getting that $29.99, you're getting the $50, $60, $80. Now Comcast is just one. Now let's look at um, Charter Spectrum from the old Time Warner side. Broadcast and sports um, program surcharges, $11.55. Taxes, $9. HD set-top box rental fee, $11.75. Digital converters, $6.99 per TV. If you have three TVs, it's 20 bucks. Other fees, $7 and change. This really adds up quick um, with it. So I firmly believe that core cutting will never catch up because there's just so many additional fees on top of the cable. Plus, Spectrum raised the price twice this year. Comcast just announced another price hike next year. Yeah, Netflix went up a dollar, DirecTV went up five, but you look at it, it's a fraction. Comcast is even raising the prices on so-called rate-locked contracted customers. All these people here, my price won't go up for two years. Well, the core price will, but all those fees and taxes are typically not included with rate locks. Comcast is raising their regional broadcast fee, their um, regional sports fees too. So those are going up in price 
on top of their core package pricing. So keep that in mind. Even when you think you're locked in, they find ways to raise your prices. Of course, those are promotional offers. They go up. With the Comcast plan, some bundles will now cost over $254 a month. If I remember right when I was looking at this, the cheapest TV plan is like 50 bucks now when you take it all into consideration of everything um, that adds in the fees and taxes if you want the DVR and everything. So when you say core cutting costs as much as the TV, it just doesn't, the math just doesn't work. And the best part with this is, let's say it does. There's no contract with core cutting. Unlike with most traditional pay TV services that charge a, or have a contract with their service, with core cutting, if a service jacks up the rate, hey, there's eight other options. With cable TV, you're lucky to have two or three options. You may have satellite option, a cable TV, maybe you live in an AT&T U-verse market where you can get that. So, but with core cutting, you have DirecTV Now, Sling TV, PlayStation View, Hulu, Fubo, Philo, at t Watch, and a dozen other um, live TV streaming services. The truth is though, most core cutters don't even bother with the live TV service. The majority of core cuttings um, will, core cutters won't have um, a live TV service. They'll be happy with Netflix, they'll be happy with Hulu. And when you know it, most cable subscribers have those too. So the truth is, even if you went back to cable, would you give up your Netflix? House of Cards, Orange is the New Black, Stranger Things. Would you give up your um, Handmaid's Tale when it comes out? Most Americans not, that have cable also pay for a streaming service, so that's an additional cost. So the truth is, when you, no matter what way you slice this, the ability to switch providers when fees go up takes like five minutes. Log in, cancel, log, um, sign up for a new service, install on your Roku Fire TV, Apple TV, and there you go. But Luke, what about internet? So we've shown you can easily switch, there's not the fees, the base packages are cheaper, even with the price hikes, cables price hikes are going up even faster. But I need internet, and they want to charge me more for it when I cancel. I, I need that. What can I do? Won't they just keep raising it because they have a monopoly market? They may have it now. Now, I'll get into the suggestions on how to save money with uh, your current internet provider now. But looking forward, you have 5G internet, fiber being put down, fixed wireless, which is kind of the same concept of 5G, different technology in the background. Uh, but for simplification, we have all these 5G internet options rolling out. Verizon's already live in several cities like Houston and Sacramento, rolling out some more. If you're a Verizon customer, $50 a month, crazy fast speed, no data cap, a great deal. Um, if you're not, 70 bucks a deal, a month, still a decent deal. Uh, you have AT&T, T-Mobile promising to launch this year 5G networks. You have Spectrum promising to launch next year, Dish coming up, Charter coming out with their service, and more, all looking to bring internet competition, which is something we really need. In the past, you only had you know, cable, DSL, maybe one other option if you're lucky, and that was it. Now you're looking to have five or 10 options. And what studies have repeatedly shown, when you have fiber or a Fiber coming to the market where there's cable and DSL, prices usually go down, speed goes up because there's competition. Now we're getting that through fixed wireless services that are doing a great job out there. But that's in the future, yeah. So in the future, you're gonna have five, six, seven options fighting like we have with cell phone plans right now. What can you do today to keep your internet plan pricing down? The truth is, no matter how great of a customer you've been for your current provider, they don't really care. They're gonna give that new customer a better rate. There's a few things you can do to still cut your cost. Um, it's nothing, trust me, nothing's more painful than being, hey, I was with you for five years. I was never late. I never complained. I Heck, I never even probably maybe had your text come out to fix anything. I never called you. I just paid the bill. And I'm hearing you're offering a new customer half the price I'm paying now. Well, what can you do about that? Couple things. First of all, you can always switch. You're probably saying, Luke, I have cable, DSL is awful. You may want to give DSL a second look. Yes, DSL in some areas is still bad, but in most of America, DSL is offering great speeds. Actually, for a long time where I lived, DSL was faster. They offered a gigabyte service here. Cable did not. Cable recently matched that here. But you shop around, see what they can offer, even if you don't want to switch. So you really don't want to go to DSL. You really want to stick with your cable provider. Know what the DSL provider in your area or the other way around is offering 
so that when you call your current provider and say, hey, I want a price hike or decrease because you raised my price, they're gonna say, oh, you know, it's just what we can do. You say, well, really, that's all you can do. Well, AT&T, Comcast Spectrum, your competitor in the market is offering me the same speed, $30 cheaper. 90% of the time I find they will match that price. If you, they know what the price is, but they're not gonna tell you it. You need to point it out to them. If they still won't, they say, oh, well, you know, at and is offering $30 cheaper, but we won't match that. Maybe you need to switch to at and Do that for you know, a few months, a year. Once you've been gone for a little while, you're suddenly a new customer back with your original provider. You can switch back and get the new customer rate. Every couple of years, I make these jumps because I can get the new customer promo rate and they'll be happy to. The second thing to be careful here with current internet plans is they will always try to sell you the highest. We had a Spectrum um, phone representative ha give us a inside look into what they do when people call and say they're gonna become core cars. The number one role was to sell them the fastest internet plan possible and tell them they needed that for streaming. Truth is you don't. You really don't need a gigabyte service for streaming. It's cool if you like gaming and all that, you can get a lot out of it, it's a lot of fun. But you can stream fairly well on the lower plans. I streamed great on 20. I actually cut the cord with only 10 down. The, so my recommendation is to start low, maybe downgrade your internet, because you can always go up. But if you sign for that gigabyte, they're gonna say, hey, you know, you signed a contract for gigabyte, we're not gonna lower your internet speed until that contract's up. But at any point, they will happily say, hey, you signed for a 20, 30, 50 down, you're saying that's not cutting it for you, you want something more, yeah, for five bucks more, we'll move you to 100, 250 down, whatever their tiering in that area may be. But once you agree to that higher plan, you're stuck. So always start low and upgrade later if you want, because you can very easily. They'll take five bucks more from you a month. So there, there's my recommendations. No, I don't think um, cable will ever be as cheap as Corkine because they have all the fees, all the taxes, all the legacy overhead. Um, also, with you say, well, okay, streaming prices go up. Yeah, Netflix went up a dollar, but Spectrum raised their price twice this year. Comcast raised the price earlier this year, announced in January it's going up. What about internet? Well, with the flood of 5G competitors, fixed wireless fiber, they're not in the position they used to be. And even if they are in your area, they soon won't be as the next three to four, uh, five years come by. More and more providers will come bring competition. What can you do now? Again, remember, Know what the competitors are charging in your area because that gives you real power when you're uh, negotiating with them. Be willing to switch. Don't disregard DSL. I know a lot of people say, say DSL is awful. It's a lot better than it used to be. In some areas it's not, and I get it. But for the most Americans out there, it's a legitimate option. And a majority of my core cutting experience has been on DSL. So keep that in mind. And don't get talked into crazy fast plans. Get cheap ones, they can always raise your price later. So what do you think? Leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you. But remember, don't be tricked into this disregarding um, core cutting because you think someday in the future may be more expensive. Because if it is, you can always go back, but I just don't think it will. So let me know, what was your break even point? How much money are you saving? Leave me a comment down below, I'd love to hear from you. So check back every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern for our weekly core cutting Q&A, every Saturday for our core cutting recap shows, how-to videos, and more every week. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing.